Hey guys, it's Vinu again and this time I tried out something kind of new to me. You know, I usually make animations based around characters, but this time I wanted to create a landscape completely inside of Blender's Grease Pencil. So no bringing in drawn out elements from Photoshop or Krita. When I started creating this, I was fresh out of finishing the last God of War game and I was in complete awe of its huge beautiful landscapes and how tiny it made you feel. So at first I kind of wanted to recreate a landscape scene based off of God of War. So I started drawing out some super rough thumbnails of scenes that would look cool, such as these like mainly of them at sea on their small boat. But I kinda realized if I made something of this scale, I won't really be able to animate any of its elements in 2D as everything will be really far off in the distance and we won't really be able to see any of the fine details. So I decided to scale down the scene a bit and not make it right out of God of War but just get a tiny bit of inspiration from it. So I wanted my scene to have sort of a cell shaded look to it like these references and not go towards too much to the realistic side of things since we are quite limited to the basic brushes we have in Grease Pencil. And with that in mind, I went on to create a rough draft of my scene. I wanted it to be some sort of ruined place covered in seawater and maybe have some remains of an ancient statue here and there. You know, in this sort of a nice self-contained looking cove. And something that I really wanted to have was some see-through water. It's just something really satisfying about animated see-through water, right? And I decided to animate stuff like some vines moving in the wind, some waves in the water, running water in the back, and small small interesting details like that. And to top it all off, a slow zoom out to show the separation between all these layers in a 3D space. And huge thanks to Sketchfab for sponsoring this video. Sketchfab is a super cool site with a huge library of 3D models and assets accessible for everyone. And not just that, it allows you to upload, buy and sell all kinds of 3D assets easily. So don't forget to check out Sketchfab for all your 3D model needs with our link down in the description. So now we move on to Blender to get things started. So loosely following my reference, I start out by sketching out different elements in this scene using the pencil brush in Grease Pencil. But always remember to create new grease pencil objects in the 3D space for each of your separate elements so that you can freely work on each of them on its own and move them around. As you can see, I'm placing the layers that should be far off in the distance as further away from the camera as I can. This really gives it that sense of depth when the camera movements happen. And I'm making this ruined statue the main point of interest so it will be placed in the middle of the 3D space. I kinda made this statue to look like a broken down remain of the statue of Thor from God of War as a homage to that as well. And I drew out a broken hand behind his face holding his hammer Mjolnir if you could tell. Now since most of these elements are partly submerged in water, we need some ripples and waves around here. So there's a neat trick you can do since you are drawing in a 3D space. Just go to the 3D view and click on the Z axis button so it stays flat on this axis. And now you can draw some ripples and waves around them. And when you bring it back to the normal view, you got this cool 2D plus 3D look to it. Also, I'm animating a tuft of grass swaying in the wind and another branch opposite to that reacting to the wind as well. And then I go over everything again with the pencil brush to bring out more detail in everything. In the far off back, I'm animating the waterfall to look like running water by drawing out strokes on the water like this. And coming back to the ripples that I drew out on the z-axis, I slightly animate them to move outwards and move inwards again as well. Another cool thing you can do since you are working on a 3D space is that you can have some elements at an angle. I'm doing this to the vines that I have on top, so I'm just selecting that grease pencil object and rotating it outwards to give it some more depth. And with that, I slightly animate them as well to make them look like they're swaying in the wind. So now you have a really good idea of the depth of the whole scene and we can move on to colouring. So to start off, I'm colouring in all my grease pencil objects with the base colour on their respective layers. So after that, I'm gonna try properly colouring one layer at a time. To start with, I'm gonna do some basic shading on them using this brush called Tex Wet 1. I'm giving the edges a bit of rim light as well with this brush and to create some cell shaded shadows I'm gonna create a multiply layer on a low opacity with the material set to black. 
and then I repeat all these steps onto the rest of the layers as well. Mind you, this can get a bit tedious as you have to keep creating new materials for each color you want in each of the grease pencil objects. So it's good practice to have a reference image of a color palette that you can pick colors off of. Now comes the interesting part, the water. Since this is like a cove with a sand filled ground, I'm going to emulate that by creating a new grease pencil object on the C axis like the ripples and filling it with a sand color. One thing to note is that if the object is not big enough, it creates some sort of weird artifacts around the other layers. So I had to make this sand layer and water layer quite large compared to the rest of the layers. So on top of the sand object, I created a new object with a greenish blue water like material and set the opacity down so it kind of mimics water and you could see the other layers that would be partly submerged in the water. And also at this point, I separated my viewport to two and keyed a camera zoom out to see if everything was lining up perfectly in the final shot. And I didn't want the sand layer to be blank like this, so I created a new layer in the grease pencil object and drew a bit of texture on the sand to add more depth and realism to it. And now I'm drawing over the ripples in a very light material so that it creates a nice contrast on top of the water surface. And another touch I add is that I make the color of the water a bit darker the further away it is from the camera using my brush tool to add to the depth. Similarly, I'm adding a bit of yellow to make the water more brighter as it gets closer to the camera. On the waterfall, just like the water ripples, I'm adding some details in white to show that the water is moving. And afterwards, I animate some mist below the foot of the waterfall with my brush set to a very low opacity. I also added some area lights focusing on the statue in the middle, but this didn't really prove effective. And I drew out a bit of foam at the bottom of each object where they would meet the surface of the water. And then I added a noise modifier and made it move constantly to liven up the scene a bit more. And a bit down the line, I changed up the color of the water to look less murky and be more brighter and pleasing to the eye instead. And I increased the size of the head so that it covers the bottom parts of the layers behind it and added some hand-drawn mist to the back of it. Like I said earlier, the 3D lights didn't really have much of an effect on this, so I created some hand-drawn god rays to fall in front of the statue and gave it a slight noise modifier as well to liven it up. And finally, I went into each of the objects with any vegetation in them and added a tiny bit of noise with the noise modifier so that the leaves and grass would look like they're also swaying in the wind like the hand-drawn tuft of grass. With that, I rendered out my scene and did some color corrections in Premiere Pro to create a bit more depth and contrast to it, including some sound effects as well. And there you have it, a 2D landscape scene completely animated and colored inside of Blender with no other software as needed. So thank you so much for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and now you all know what to do if you need an animated background for your animations. So don't forget to try something like this out and share with us what you've made. Big shout out to our awesome patrons on Patreon for supporting us. So if you want us to keep making more cool videos for you guys, you can go support us over there. And we've got a discord as well where you can hang out with us and other creatives and share all your awesome work with us. So don't forget to like, subscribe and comment what you thought about today's video. And have a great day and we'll catch you guys on the next video.